All right, guys. So I think now I am recording. This is Sean and welcome to Southern Audacity. This is the first time I've tried recording using the computer. And this is the third time I've tried doing this. And now I realize I do have to hit the record button. Mm -mm -mm. The moments we have. So today I'm going to just be doing some work on my computer, um, showing you how I set up the designs in So What Pro when I do the applique on top of the left chest with the name going over the applique. So I, let's see here, I wanna share my screen and I have Sew It Pro opened up. Let's move this down. Hopefully it's still recording okay. Um, Sew What Pro is opened. Um, Sew What Pro, I cannot remember the name of the company that developed it, developed it but it's, a very inexpensive program if you want to start editing and lining up, you know, your embroidery designs. There are other programs that the same company has, but So What Pro is the only one that I have from them. Um, I also have in Brilliance, um, which, yeah, I'm working on some other things because I am learning digitization. I didn't realize I still had that stuff pulled up, but um, that's a story for another video. Today, we're looking at So What Pro, and I am going to pull in the designs and fonts that I want to use, and I will show you how I do this, okay? It's really simple. I have all of my designs saved onto a flash drive, and sometimes I use a couple of flash drives as backup for my backup, but um, I'm going to go to this little folder right here where it says open an existing document. So I'm going to click on that, and because I was already in my folders, it automatically went back to the last place I was at. So what I'm gonna do, this is the, the uh, flash drive that I have my design saved on and it is full. Yeah, it's real full. I'm gonna click into that and I'm just gonna scroll down until I find the designs that I'm looking for. So initially I know the first thing that I want to go down is that double varsity applique font from River Mill Embroidery. And so I'm going to scroll down and find my folder that has all of my River Mill Embroidery designs, okay? And so it is right here, the Varsity Double Applique Style number two. I'm gonna click that. And because I'm gonna be using my brother embroidery machine, I want to use the PES extension on um, the designs. So for the left chest, I'm going to use that four and a half inch font because that is big enough to be in that area. And I am looking for a T. So I double click that and it brought it into the screen. So I think this automatically opens up into a five by seven frame. But just to be sure, I'm going to go up here to this where it says adjust hoop size position. And I'm gonna click on that. And yes, it opens up into the 7.09 by 5.12 frame. So that is your five by seven frame for your brother machine or for my brother machine. So I'm gonna just cancel that because I don't need to make any changes. And I do, I like to make sure that I'm in the same frame that I'm gonna be using because that'll give you a good idea as to how it's gonna line up. And you wanna make sure that you are using a frame size that is appropriate for your machine and your uh, whatever you're stitching onto as well. So now I want to bring in the name to go across, across, not across, <laughs> the name to go across the, the T here. So I'm gonna go up here to file. And after file, I'm gonna click merge, not open because we already have a design in the, in the uh, program pulled up, we want to hit merge so that we're adding to it. Because if you hit open, it's going to open up a whole new folder. You see how it opens up a new folder? You don't want to do that. So we're going to go to file and I'm going to click merge. And now I'm going to back out of this river mill file and I'm going to go up to my fonts. Now I do have fonts from a few different people. Uh, digitizers, but 
the ones that I use most often, I actually save it in a folder called fonts, okay, just so that I can find them a little bit quicker than to go through a whole folder full of whoever's designs I might be in love with at that time. <laughs> so I am going to use Simone. That is my favorite font from Designs by Juju. And let's see, where is the Simone font? Okay, so I have Simone font saved separately as PES and DST, but I'm using the brother. I'm gonna open up the PES. And let's scoot this over just a little bit. And I want to find a capital T. And I wanna stay in the one and a half inch uh, sizing. Okay, that's the capital T. Now it's highlighted. I'm going to click open. It took a little time there, didn't it? So it brought the T in and it said it sat it right in the center initially. So I'm going to pull it over. And I think this will be big enough, but we'll see in just a moment. The next thing I want to do is get the rest of the letters out for her name. So instead of going in file, merge, and selecting it over and over again that way. Since I've already pulled up one letter from that font, I'm going to click this button over here that says insert lettering from info pane. So I'm going to click the info pane so that it will open up and it opens up into the last set of designs that you use. But you see how it pulled open the whole file for all the sizes for the PES of the Simone font. So to be sure that I am still working within the same size, I'm going to select that T again right here to see if it's the right size T. And it is. Now, I know that from this A down to this Z is the size that I want to stay working in, OK? So now I'm just going to use delete on my keyboard and delete that extra T because I don't need two T's there. So now I need a lowercase y, a lowercase r, and a lowercase a because her name is Tyra. So now I am going to line these letters up and I like my cursive or my script letters to overlap. And then I'm going to use my control key and I'm gonna uh, select or what is it? Left click on each letter so that it actually brings the box around everything. So once that box is around everything, as long as I hold this cursor and I left click and hold it, I could drag it to bring it where I want it at, okay? And I'm thinking I might be able to go with a bigger size. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete that size because I'm gonna try the next size up. I think that name is short enough that a bigger size will be okay. So let me go to the next set. Let's see, that was the first one. Now, where is the next T? There we go. Nope, that's a smaller. And that is one of the tricky things about this because you can't really see what the sizes are if they're not all separated individually. You kind of hunt, you kind of hunt for what size you really want to work with. Okay, let's try that. I don't know what size that is, but I like it. T. Y R. A, where is my A? Okay, so now I'm gonna go through again, line everything up. And let's see here. Yeah, I think that'll work. And I'm gonna keep it as close as possible without it like looking all bunched up. And let me line that T up and let's see how that'll look. I'm not sure about that. That might not work. Uh, yeah, that, mm, that might be a little bit too big. So I'm going to go back to the original size and be done with it because 
I normally do use the smaller size, but I just figured because the name was so small, as far as letter wise, you know, T-Y-R-A, you got four letters. So I'm just gonna go back and go with the original size that I was working with. Nope, wrong letter. I need the short, small case A, lowercase A. And now I'm gonna line these up. For some reason, when I pull up fonts in, I don't know what it is, but the Y's always go real high up. Okay, now I'm gonna hit the, hold the control key again as I select each letter, being careful not to select anything from the applique letter because you don't wanna select that and then drag it to a different spot. Okay. Now, just for the sake of being able to see it well, I click the info pane button again to get rid of the, the info pane right there. So if I click it, it'll come back up and now I'll do that. But anyways, I'm gonna go through. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of some of that blue. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, I'm gonna select the word Tyra, and I am going to change the, the color. Girl, get out of here. Out, out, get out. I need to get my gate up here, sorry. But um, just so I can see how it's gonna stand out. And I think that'll stand out pretty good. If you want it, your, your name to be bigger, of course, just select a bigger font. And um, what I'll do now is, because I don't want the needle to stop every time it stitches the T, the Y, the R, the A, I want to join all of those colors together. And so to do that, I'm gonna go up here to edit and I'm gonna select join threads and I'm gonna select join threads of same color starting at number, and I'm gonna change that from one to seven. Okay, and so now that is all one color change. So your needle is not gonna, you're not gonna be stopping and going, stopping and going. It's just gonna stitch it all as one. Now, that is basically all you're doing to set this up. Um, that's your placement. Then you've got your tack down. Then you've got your second placement, your second tack down. You have your satin stitch, then your second satin stitch. And you know, after the second satin stitch, two layers of water soluble stabilizer over that before you start stitching the name on top, okay? Because your needle might get caught up and start dragging and it'll look a whole mess. And that water soluble stabilizer really will save you a lot of grief if you just put it over it. And when I say water soluble, I'm talking about the Salvi kind, not the um, Vylene that's kind of like fabric. I'm talking about the Salvi kind that is almost looks like saran wrap or something, but that's what I'm talking about. So that is how I set this up. Um, if you wanted to change the colors of the other threads, you can certainly do that in here. There's not a real reason to, but that's how I do it. If you wanted to change those colors, um, if you wanted everything to be the same color, like you're just gonna do one color for both satin stitches. Of course, highlight both of them, change them to the color that you want. I'm gonna do mint green. And then once they're the same color, you could go up here to edit, join threads, join threads of the same color starting at number five. And so that lessens the needle changes if you're gonna you know, just do one collar for both things, uh, for both pieces or both satin stitches. So mm, I think that's about it. 
Um, I hope that this wasn't too long of a video and I hope that that kind of clarified how I set my items up when I am doing um, my, my font setups in Sew so It Pro. If you make a mistake, as long as you didn't save anything, you have your undo button, okay? So if you click your undo button, you see it separated those into two separate stitches again. And if I click it again, it changes the color back and it will undo so many times. So um, that's one good thing about Sew so What Pro as well. It does have that undo. Um, there is a resizing of the pattern feature. I try not to very often just because I never know if it's gonna work out, if it's gonna stitch out or not. Um, some people will tell you, you can go by 20% or whatever, but I just try to find a design size that is, get out of here, out. I'm gonna get my gate. Sorry. Um, I have to. Um, I lost my train of thought. Okay, well, hey, that's that. <laughs> um, it's been good seeing you all. I'm glad that you were able to sit and join me real quick. I am going to try to get another video done um, in just a few minutes because I feel like. Mm, it's been almost two months since I've done a video and now I'm playing catch up. But, you know, I work full time, have a kid that's got a busy schedule, try to be a wife sometime and it's summertime and in Georgia, you know, we're gardening. So um, if you remember me from my last, not my last, from when I first started my YouTube channel, it was all gardening. I still do it. I just don't record it anymore. I just, I don't. But um, thanks for joining me. I hope that you'll stop back again and I'll see you in the next one.